Hello and welcome to our review of Star Trek Strange New Worlds episode Cinco, five. Is that correct? Am I doing five? No, episode six. <laughs> and the name of this episode is, Alan, please tell us. Lift us up where suffering cannot reach, I think. I'm pretty sure. It's a long one. And pretentious. It's kind of a, got a TOS vibe. For the world is hollow when I touch the sky, and let this be your last battlefield, and all those whimsical titles. And so I'm joined this week by the nerdiest Prime crew, Alan O'Neill from Halifax, Nova Scotia. Yo. And Namir Ahmed from Toronto. Hello. What does it always sound like when you introduce us? Like we're getting into a boxing ring. Oh, it's, it's trying to make it exciting. It's what we're doing. It's going to be like a... And I'm Lucas Cardona Morse, and I'm here from another random location in Southern California. What do we think about this week's episode? Let's start with Namir. Um, I, you know, I generally liked it. I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, it was an, it, you know, kind of a cool concept. Uh, there was a couple of things that I thought were were strange, but, um, gen, you know, I, I enjoyed watching it. It's a, it's another solid episode. The last three have been pretty good, including this one. Alan, what do you think of this episode? Loved it. <laughs> I loved everything about this one. Um, it was a uh, a classic Star Trek. Um, type story and uh, I, I was kind of surprised by the ending with this one um, but I liked again it was just a, you know another another one of those Star Trek stories where humanity's values come up against an alien races and it brings about some some uh, thought provoking uh, uh, ideas and uh, yeah I, I always enjoy those I don't know how I feel about this episode I think I liked the um Kind of the final reveal and kind of where it was all going that was pretty cool but there was kind of like getting there i found a little bit dull or a little bit predictable and i didn't i didn't really believe the relationship between uh captain pike and the, his love interest basically and i kind of knew like going in that she was gonna be bad news and so maybe that's because i've watched so much star trek but I think that that makes it like not a surprise when she ends up being bad news. But I guess the main thing that I wanted to talk about was just like the concept of this episode being uh, basically about kind of like child slavery. Yeah, I got that vibe, you know, kind of child child abuse, um, and even and even having you know finally picking up after a couple episodes of hardly any mention of it, we got back to Mabenga's storyline with the the uh, the daughter in the transporter and you know uh you kind of get the vibe from from uh their relationship that it almost felt a little like child abuse because from her perspective you know she's just being drugged back into this uh existence and and you know basically being being told the same story like she basically tells her dad i'm like oh we've already done this and then she just you know, and he's he's like, oh, because his life's going on. He's got all these other things in the go, and he doesn't remember, you know, the the particular details of these interactions. And you know, it seems kind of one sided, where it's more like for his sake uh, versus versus her. And that kind of goes along with the other themes from the from the uh, the alien race with their first servant. And uh, no, that was uh, it, there was definitely yeah some child abuse commentary here. The theme for me wasn't really like child labor. It was more like, um, you know, like like the golden child. In the the, you know how there in, in Tibetan Buddhism, there's like there's like the one kid that's supposed to be the reincarnation of previous versions of Buddha. So th- that's kind of how I saw this a little bit, um, and you know, and so for me, it had that kind of connotation. I thought that was really interesting. I didn't really see... I knew something was up with the ending. Um, like, like something not good was going to happen. I didn't know what it was. I, I was pretty sure he was just gonna gonna die. Um, but what ended up happening was, was way worse. And almost a little too... Like, a little too um, horror-ish for Star Trek. Which I kind of liked, right? It was one of those endings that I feel like like is a is 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 a little chilling or disturbing you know 
like uh, and some and those are like in the original series too like the end of charlie x where he's drug off by by the energy beings that don't understand his needs and wants for an eternity you know then you you're kind of left with with that as like oh gee that must be just like agonizing for that guy and and uh, you know this is the same kind of kind of ending where it's like you're just left a little cold because like the kid was super into you know his duty or whatever and he's like really excited to ascend or whatever and then i was like i was like did he know what was coming or not because it seemed like once the wire started coming out of his face he was like holy fuck this is not what i was anticipating i thought i was going to be warshipped and run the world he's like i've made a huge mistake <laughs> like they buttered him up and treated him like royalty and now just to just to basically throw him to the wolves with this ai system and i was like that's that's very dark and I, I really like that scene at the end where Pike's starting to realize that something is up, even though he probably should have realized it well ahead of that. But uh, they reveal like the desiccated kid body in that, you know, uh, in the coffin, and it looks horrible. You know, like oh my god, this is brutal. Um, so I thought that was that was a great touch. So for me, that that scene at the end made made the episode because um, it kind of went for it a little bit, which I thought was was really great i still don't really understand how maybe they explained it and i kind of zoned out but how the the those cities are sitting in the clouds like how are they actually like floating yeah it's, it's like an ai that controls the you know the hovering technology but i think but not just the hovering technology basically everything in the, in the city or on the planet um yeah. and so they, they all benefit from this uh, AI technology that needs the mind of a child to uh, to process, you know, all that, all those operations. I think my feeling about the episode in general was that I didn't really buy into the romance aspect of it. I think I understand why it's there because so it really gives uh, Pike, you know, some sort of emotional stake and dilemma. But everything else in the episode, uh, in other words, the twist of those pirates or whoever's trying to kidnap the child at the beginning and the betrayal of the or the seeming betrayal of the father the biological father of the boy and it's kind of this mystery when they reveal at the end that um they're trying to save this child from enslavement you know eternal enslavement and then suddenly it it, 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 it takes on a completely different light where the father kind of seems like He's betrayed his culture, and at the end, you go, like, "Oh, he's like trying to save his son, and also trying to do the right thing, the moral thing." But I don't understand the plan for the father and what they were trying to do. It seemed overly complicated. When I think he could have just told Pike, like he could have just been like, "Hey, here's what's happening on the planet. Uh, my son's going to be sacrificed and, and turned into, you know, the part of this giant computer. Uh, can you can you help us?" No, I think what was happening at the beginning was that the the kid was being brought from point A to point B in a shuttle, and and then th that's the 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 bandits were taking advantage of that to just try to kidnap the kid, and it just right. so happened that, that the Enterprise was there and they intervened basically. And so the rest of it was kind of made up on the fly. So they were like, now that we're on the ship, this is this is what we can do. We can pretend to be to the, the the rebel or whatever ship but in actual fact we're beaming him to uh some sort of like like i don't know vegetable and fruit storage container on the enterprise right so they were just making that up as they went well i would assume because i'm like how would they have known the enterprise was going to be there and their technology so i mean they saw an opportunity i guess a couple of these episodes have been like that where there's lots of stuff on, and there's like a thing like that that happened like the being off the ship of really to continue to into some sort of plan and i don't understand but but then it's kind of like we're moved on we move off of it so quickly that i go okay whatever like and it doesn't really bother me maybe it should bother me and maybe i should ask more questions about it but i just, i don't really i just kind of like take it the whole episode um in general and kind of go yeah, that I like about the episode because I think at this point I'm more responding emotionally to everything than intellectually. Like, like I just like too that they gave it the relationship for Pike. Like I, 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 I kind of smiled when 
when they basically gave him a woman of the week, kind of like Kirk, a girl in every port. Um, but I liked that this one, had, she had like a backstory and a, and a previous relationship with him, which made you a little more invested in it. Because that's what I always thought was ridiculous in Star Trek, was that they would go to a planet, they meet somebody that they've never seen before in their life, they fall in love within like 48 hours, and then they're just ready to abandon their career in life to stay with this person. Because I mean, like, didn't that happen with like Dax in Deep Space Nine when she met that guy who was shifting dimensions? It's like, oh, geez, you're going to shift to another dimension. I got to make a decision if I'm going to abandon my entire career. And then, you know, she tries and then it doesn't work. But, you know, that's, that stuff happens all the time. Like, like Riker with the androgynous alien who wanted to be a girl. You know, he fell in love with her within just the time they were in orbit and was ready to, like, risk his career to, <laughs> to rescue her. <laughs> Everything happens at warp speed in the future. It's just nice that they actually give her, yeah, they give this the background, you know, so it doesn't seem silly that, that he's willing to to go overboard for this lady that he just met. I don't know. If I if I saw, Cap, like, Captain Pike and, you know, I would fall in love with him instantly. I mean, have you seen his hair? It's like, it's like a foot high. I just want to talk to, I, for a second about Captain Pike because... And I feel like at least Alan will, will probably uh, disagree with me, but I I've been kind of watching his performance over the last six episodes, and he the way that he portrays Captain Pike, it's kind of in this uh, very um, you know in style acting method of Hollywood right now of like uh, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like kind of cool um swagger he's got swagger <laughs> yeah but it, it's like a it's a little bit like a brad pitt arrogant thing going on where he's a, he's a little bit condescending in the way that he talks to people and it kind of drives me a little bit nuts because i'm like it, you know it, there's some it, i don't know i don't know if you guys notice that but it, it, it's like it's on the teetering edge of like which is being like wanted me to punch him in the face a little bit. Kind of, well, it's kind of built into his character anyway, because he knows he's basically indestructible because he knows his own death. And, and uh, you know, he's already been established that he's one of the most decorated captains in Starfleet. So he's probably got that, you know, that feather in his cap. And he's probably, he probably is like overly confident and a little cocky. That's probably just his, his style. Yeah, I, I can't, you're giving me an in-universe reason why he's like that. And what I'm saying, and I think it's a, oh, a you're choice. Just saying so, um, Mount. Um, Anson Mount is making a decision to do like a Brad Pitt type thing. I don't know how else to describe it, but Brad Pitt does it. But the way that Brad Pitt mitigates it is that he often plays characters or even in real life, the way he talks is, is a gosh darn it. Like, I'm not that smart. Like, you know, I'm not as pretty or as, as whatever is I you think I am good old boy you know he's kind of like this hey everybody hey yeah so you know whatever yeah <laughs> you know? well I think I think you're right like I, I feel like he's not that interesting a character right and because everybody loves him and he doesn't really have to put any work in for it you know he just has to be like hey how's it going welcome to my barbecue you know like that's all he needs to do and and everybody's like you're amazing you know so there's there's not like there's not a lot of depth kind of there. I feel like he doesn't have to work. I also feel like Anson Mount, I think I feel like that's just Anson Mount, right? Like the, the actor is that character. So he's just playing himself. You know, the other thing I noticed, this is kind of a different topic, but Hammer wasn't in this episode either. He's, he hasn't been in the last two episodes. I know, it's bummed me out. <laughs> he's honestly, he's the best character on that show. Yeah, he was easy to explain away last week because the ship was under repair and he's probably busy just turning wrenches. But, but yeah, he could have been this one doing something. You know why? Because it, it's hammer time. He's off doing hammer time. It's always hammer time. Oh, I'm hoping we, we're in for a trip to Andorra in the last four episodes. <laughs> to visit his, uh, okay. his arrogant family. <laughs> I really enjoy how Alan just completely ignored that bad MC Hammer joke. Can't touch this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want I don't want to talk about that. Let's never see you dance again. <laughs> was that dancing? I don't think that was dancing. I'm not sure what that was. Stop. Hammer time. So, 
there was an episode of Voyager. Um, there was 172 of them. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to remember what, what was. Oh, Counterpoint. So Counterpoint in season five had Janeway fall in love with this other character. And it was the same thing. Like, you knew he was going to be a bad, um, bad news by the end. And, and the ending of that worked really well because she, even though she did fall for him, she also was a Starfleet captain and she also had a duty. And so she kind of, she did her job while falling in love. And so when it turned out he was bad, well, then she had covered all the bases, basically. I like that a lot because it created a duality where, you know, she's human, but she's also a captain. And also, I feel like captains are smart enough that they can do two things at the same time. But in this episode, it felt like Captain Pike just went completely the, completely the uh, I'm falling in love and, and completely you know, neglected his, um, his duty as a captain. Yeah, that's a good point. I never thought of it that way. Like, he was pretty, he had no hesitation, you know. He's like, oh, is that is that your room? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, let's go, let's go. We're, whatever you want me to do, I will do. <laughs> <laughs> he had decided to sleep with her the second that she showed up. It was super fortunate for him too, because he said, "What well, he he visited that planet like a few years ago." She, I think she even mentions it, like, "How unlikely is it that we would meet again?" You know, in two two emergencies or whatever. It turns out Pike has like a booty call list, and he's just crossing planets off his list. Well, we thought Kirk was doing. It's like Jesus, this guy. He always was putting his boots on. <laughs> you know what just happened. <laughs> That's right. These aren't just new boots that I'm trying to break in. <laughs> Sitting on the edge of bed with my boots on. Repeatedly. <laughs> that always would bother me about Captain Kirk. It, it was kind of an in-joke, but it always felt like an inorganic part of his character. It was almost like it was there because it was the 60s and all leading men had to like sleep with a bunch of women because that's what people did. It's the same thing with James Bond. Yeah, but I, I kind of almost believe it much more with Kirk, right? Because he has that sense of arrogance and he... You know, flaunts the rules when he when he wants to. So it seemed a little bit more like, yeah, of course he's going to do that. Versus Pike. Versus Pike, yeah, versus Pike. Whereas Pike to me was was always seemed like he kind of was by the book. You know, like everybody loved him, but he just he he doesn't want to make anybody mad, kind of thing. Like he's just like I'm going to go down this straight and narrow because I don't want to piss anybody off. And I don't know if that's actually true, but that's always the feeling that that I got from his character. Right, because I think the worst thing for him is if people don't like him. Yeah, he doesn't really discipline anybody, right? Like Uhura just blew up a ship, and he's like, "Nah, all right," <laughs> you know. Womp, womp. <laughs> if that actually happened, you you would have been like, "Okay, well, you're obviously not qualified to be on that on that station. You should kind of get off the fucking bridge, you know, or or at least like get some sort of reprimand." But you know, none of that really happened. He's like, ah, that's that's life in the galaxy. Yeah. Hit little IOU note. <laughs> IOU one chip. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Please call this number so we can sort out our insurance. <laughs> oh, man, Alan, you, you, you're, very, you're very quiet. What, what do you think about uh, what we're saying about Anson Man and Captain Cook? I, I, I like what he's doing with the character. I say I find he has a total, you know, he has a ton of charisma and, you know, I, I I I could watch that guy just read the dictionary. I was like, I'd be compelled. Alan's in love with Anson Mount. I don't know. I I, I I think I do. I think I have some sort of man man crush on Anson Mount. He is a good looking guy. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like this guy. I'd hang out with him. Yeah, like but he wouldn't hang out with us. He no, he would not hang out with me. He'd be polite to me, but he would just kind of walk away. <laughs> Maybe I, I don't dislike him. I just resent him. You resent him for being so likable. Yeah, and cool. <laughs> you guys have something more to say? I think I kind of said everything I need to say for the episode. But yeah, this is this is comfort food for me. Like I love these ones that just that just make make me stop and think, and then that's what you know I've always appreciated about Star Trek is that it makes me more thoughtful. And, and throughout my life, this has become, you know, my moral compass has has come from watching these people deal with these situations because I. I'd be just like Pike in this situation. I'd be mortified that they were doing this to a child. And I'm like, your your cities don't deserve to float in, and and you don't deserve to live in luxury if it means you know that this person has to be in misery. You know, anytime a moral dilemma in Star Trek, like I I I enjoy those stories. So I hope we hope to see more of that type of 
type of thing. I, I do wish that Pike had struggled with it a little bit more, right? Like it's you really just he really just like has to deal with it near the end, right? There's no real kind of like there's no real kind of debating or there's there's no struggle. Like he it would have been much more interesting if they had the reveal in the middle of the episode and then they had the the last third of it being kind of what do we do about this? Right? Cause that to me was always the interesting part of these types of Star Trek episodes, like that moral quandary there there was always some exploration of that, right? There was always just like, should we do this? What if we do, you know, what if we go save the kid? What does that mean? We shouldn't save the kid. And and then they come up with a, their, their solution at the end of it, even if it's not the one that the audience wants, right? But this didn't have that. It was just like, it felt like a kind of a, a just like a twist reveal. And Pike didn't really have to struggle with it. it but like the episode was just over. Um, I guess I have one question and then I want to do the sort of the wrap up, but what do you guys agree with Pike? Do you think that he should have like, you know, prime directive, I like, can't do anything, watch his hands of it, or he should have like basically kidnapped the kid. Do I agree with Pike? I don't know. What do you mean? He just left the kid behind, right? And then he just left the, is you know what happened? Yeah, but there's nothing he could do at that point. I think, I think he was taken in the back as much as the kid was. Like, I think he saw that the kid wanted this the whole time. Like, why would Pike go to willingly to the ceremony if he didn't expect to see something that was going to be beautiful and majestic? That yeah, he's going to ascend to this throne and become this, this basically these people's god. Yeah. Did you guys find it weird that he wasn't asking any questions? Like they were like, you know, the, the kid is going to ascend, and he, he did. He wasn't like, oh, what what does that mean? What is what does ascend mean? You know, he, he never, he was never, like, curious. Which I, I think is interesting about his character, because I feel like that's kind of, kind of something that feels right for his character. Like, he's not a curious guy. I mean, we as a viewer know something is, something bad is coming, because that's, you know, that's the expectation in this sort of thing. It's not just going to be all wrapped up and, you know. <laughs> and they oh, this is great. Everyone has a great day. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then they, but I think you know that was it was interesting that that they went that route where Pike Pike had to react on the fly like he didn't have to struggle with this like he's like he had split split second decision about what he could do in this situation because the kids was like fuck what's going on and then he was like this ain't right <laughs> and they were all kind of coming at realization in those final seconds and there wasn't really much time to react and he did what he could but of course he was overpowered and knocked out. Yeah, yeah, okay. Let, let, let's, do our, let's do our ratings for this episode. Let's start with Namir. Okay, I'm going to give this one a six because of the, the twist ending with the with the desiccated kid corpse. Ah, that gets one more one more tick. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. that's exactly. Was that you in that coffin, Alan? <laughs> uh, so six six for me. I'm going to give this one uh, an eight. It's, it's, a, it's my kind of Star Trek. Um... So um, it's pretty pretty high mark, I think. But but yeah, I just want to see more of this more of this sort of story. And uh, so again, still an Anson Mount fanboy. This is very Captain Pike centric episode. And and uh, yeah, I just enjoy him on the screen. And we get to see him with his uh, shirt off too. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. Um, I'm really I, I you know I enjoy the episode in general. The twist ending, there was just kind of like the ramp up elements of the ramp up that I didn't love, and um, you know, and overall, I'm yeah, you know, I think it's safe to say at this point that I like this show, it's light years ahead of Star Trek Picard. I feel it's kind of like the best show, Star Trek uh, show since Voyager, and so it's been a long time, it's been since 2001, it's like I had to wait 21 years. It's been a long time getting from there to here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Enterprise gets no love. Stop! Hammer time!